serious. Very serious. Very serious. Uh, welcome uh, to GUI and in web browsers. Bi weekly call, which was over a month ago. <laughs> So this is uh, 10th of November 2020, and we will start with a really strain. Um, so I will quickly share my screen and then Rafael slash Jessica will take over. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Yep. Yes. So uh, IPFS desktop 0.13. And I say 0.13 because there's 0.13.2 with uh, fixes for Windows Auto Update. However, um, 0.13 had a new web UI, uh, new Go IPFS 0.7, uh, switched on new, the latest Electron version. Um, so to get 0.13 goodness, just pick the latest one because that includes auto updates uh, fixes for windows users uh, if you are a windows user and when you try to auto update you get that infinite loop uh, apologies for that um, it's not fully our fault so uh, what you need to do uh, is to go to ipfs desktop uh, releases and download uh, installer for 13.2 install it manually it's just this one release that you need to install manually. From this point going forward, you should get proper auto updates on Windows platform. We also uh, added Chocolaty and Snapcraft uh, publishing as a part of our pipeline. So if you prefer to use uh, those package managers or any other package manager maintained by our com IPFS community, uh, feel free to do that. I will stop my screen sharing now because uh, as a part of this release, we improved or fixed, depending on the platform, uh, native integrations for Mac and Windows. Um, I guess, Rafael, do you want to demo? I do, but I'm still installing because it <laughs> uh, releases a bit. So, uh, Jessica, how is your Mac OS thing? Um, so I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm just going to share my screen that contains an animated GIF of the action because otherwise I would have to share my entire screen and that would be massive. So no one will notice. You should here we go. Say that's a pre well, it's in a browser. <laughs> so basically, um, you can see my massive IPFS desktop here in this window. Um, we'll wait till this starts over. See, I'm taking the cat of the day and I'm dragging it up to my menu bar. This is the, the most underrated little known feature of IPFS desktop from Mac is you can drag things to the menu bar and it works beautifully. I should have taken longer because Raphael is still installing. But that said, one thing we do, um, I, I did highlight that as a feature a little bit more heavily in the rewrite of um, IPFS desktop README. And um, we'll continue to emphasize that further in uh, other places where we let people know about it. desktop's feature set because I'm a bit embarrassed as to how long it took me to realize that that was a feature because I didn't read our own release notes. Yeah, and uh, what, what's also cool, we do the same thing uh, that IPFS Companion Browser Extension does. We, when you do that, you, out, we automatically copy a shareable link to the clipboard. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's a super fast uh, way of uh, sharing files. Um, Raphael, uh, blink once if you can do the demo <laughs> or blink twice <laughs> if I should go with Companion. All right, so I go, go with, with Companion. companion. What sort of great things flights. are waiting? All right, um, so we did not have this call for a while and we had three releases of IPFS Companion. So I'll go from the oldest one. Uh, it's a stable uh, release from the stable channel. So if you just installed Companion from the uh, add-on or extension store, you probably are on this version. We added uh, a way of displaying uh, release notes on Companion updates, uh, import of big files through that quick import share um, menu item. It's now 
not only faster, but you are able to upload a very big files for gigabytes or more um, through your browser, thanks to the work by Gazala and Aking Rain. We have a better controls for um, opt-in and opt-out from uh, IPFS integrations per website. So we keep, now when you toggle this, toggle in the menu, uh, we store a, an explicit record for, is it like opt-in or opt-out? And you're able to edit those uh, lists uh, from the preferences screen. However, every time you toggle here, uh, we apply this change. And that means uh, all IPFS integrations are disabled. Uh, so those integrations, uh, by that I mean uh, things that could change the website, uh, things that change either uh, the DOM or things that redirect, let's say redirect from original HTTP server to your local host node if you have one and you, if you have uh, redirect enabled. So all the integrations provided by Companion can be uh, disabled for a specific website if you find that you get better performance either way or if you want to quickly see how the behavior changes uh, between uh, original uh, URL and the one on local host. We also uh, got support for IPFS URIs. Uh, those URIs uh, are now official and we are working towards adding support for them to web browsers through like native means. For now, only, IPF, uh, only Firefox provides an API for browser extension to like formally register a handler. That handler is still a redirect based um, but it works in Firefox. The problem is uh, the identifiers in those URIs are case sensitive and browser uh, forces lower case on them. So if you use uh, case sensitive identifiers such as CID v v0, you will see uh, this error page now, which is uh, improved by Jessica. Um, hopefully this will give you an idea what went wrong and how to fix it. Uh, Generally, when in doubt, just use CIDV1, but if you need to use uh, CIDV0, uh, this screen should help you. Uh, and in Chromium 86, um, IPFS, uh, IPNS, I, and I believe uh, DWeb and a bunch of other DWeb uh, protocol handlers got uh, safe listed. So we hope to see similar level of integration in Chromium uh, based browsers uh, in the, the future. And we had two beta releases recently. Uh, one had a switch to Webpack 5, which is not visible to users, but decreased uh, bundle size a little bit. And now when there's a new version of IPFS Companion, you will see this uh, eye icon. And when you click on it, you will be able to read release notes. So in this version, we experimented with opening release notes in a new tab, but that was kind of intrusive. Uh, so we switched to this approach. By default, you only see this icon, but in preferences, you will be able to opt in to opening that in a new tab. And in the latest beta, which shipped just 16 hours ago, uh, uh, we got this improvement. Uh, Are you demoing this? I can't see it. Are you joking to me? <laughs> Really? Is it like a black? Don't no, 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 no. You... I, I see the HackMD. Yeah, just. Oh like my me. gosh. I've been looking at the wrong screen all the time. <laughs> no. This is ridiculous. I feel so bad. So I've been like showing you all those tabs before. So let's just pretend you saw all those tabs. No, quickly. Um, here, the changes are around this toggle. And there is this nice uh, error page now. And in beta releases, we got uh, this eye icon, which tells you, oh, there's a new release and you can read what's new in this new release. And in the latest uh, IPFS companion, we moved uh, some actions to those buttons. And uh, uh, we now, when you are on DNS link website, you are able to not only copy shareable link to the 
canonical address of a website, but you can copy a link to a snapshot of this website, which will never change. And same if you want to just get an IPNS path, uh, it's also here. So thanks, Jessica, for uh, pushing this uh, forward. It's been around for months, so I feel really bad that we did not land this sooner, but it's really good. Uh, and the original work on that um, came from contributor Deedle Fake, so he deserves the original credit for that. Yep, yep. Thanks for, to everyone who push this work forward. Um, I feel really bad that I did not uh, share my screen from the very, very beginning, but uh, just the last item on my list, uh, Raphael, just blink once or twice, but after I'm done with this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, we got this project called IPFS uh, Go IP, and it's uh, just um, let me maybe give a credit where credit is due. So um, it includes a Go Lite 2 uh, data set provided by MaxMind, which is a license on Creative Commons and a custom license, uh, but it's free to use as long as you follow the license. Um, What's cool about this project is that we took that data set and we represented it as a DAG and put it on IPFS. So that enabled you to do a DNA, a DNS lookups to know what's like the country and city uh, is behind that uh, IP without fetching entire data set. You only traverse the DAG and only fetch uh, nodes that are relevant to your specific IP range. Uh, which works pretty well in web browsers. And the problem was our data set was pretty old. Uh, so we spent some time uh, to account for changes in the input format. And now we got the latest data set from uh, October, I believe. Uh, and that means there's no longer like faster than light travel in IPFS. Um, in the past, you could see uh, Peer in Europe seeing a node in from US and have a ping uh, around 20 milliseconds, which is not possible. That that's because people are trading IP ranges and something that was in US now maybe in Europe and vice versa. Uh, so now uh, this updated data set will land in uh, the new version of Go IPFS as well. But I just wanted to mention it because. People have been asking why IPFS is faster than light, so I fixed that. Um, so that's it, I believe, for uh, the real strain. Um, Raphael wants to show you something, so I will stop sharing my screen. All right, can you hear me? Yep. All right, great. Why did I just hear the train? <laughs> it was a release train. It was a release train. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Let me uh, there you go. share screen. And I guess you can see my screen now, yes? Perfect. Yes. Nice. So what Lytle want, wanted me to show is that when you have something you want to add to IPFS on your file explorer, you can just right click on it and click on the option called add to IPFS. And with it will add you to your local node, and then it will also copy a link to your clipboard if you want to share it with someone else as well. So there's the link for our little caddy. Probably going to take me a while to figure it out because I don't have everything installed here. But yeah, there it is. Pretty basic feature that works pretty well on Windows. Cool. Yeah. And it's yet another thing that unless you actually like click the right uh, the context menu, you would not know it's there. Um, cool. Let's see what's next. Uh, the next one is a quick update on pinning services. So um, let me try to share the right screen this time. Is the right screen? Is it? Oh gosh. Yep. So uh, pinning services. Um, the updates are we shipped 0.1.2, 0 
which had a small cosmetic change in how we do the search based on name. Uh, previously, it was case insensitive partial, uh, partial match, which is not the best thing to do by default. It's hard to optimize. So we switched that to exact case sensitive match uh, and added a match filter when you can change the behavior. So if you really need a case insensitive or a partial match, uh, you need to specify that. If you don't specify this parameter, uh, the search for your pin will be uh, doing the exact match. Um, and that's something we wanted to align due to the fact that while we are, we've been working on remote pinning services and remote pinning API in Go IPFS, which um, is work in progress right now, um, we realized we, we also want to improve local pinning. So uh, be cognizant that while we are adding remote pinning first, uh, some of benefits, some of additional capabilities introduced in remote pinning will all will eventually land uh, in Go IPFS um, and be possible to use in local uh, pinning context. Namely, uh, we it will be possible to attach a name um, to a pin, so you no longer will have a list of nameless CIDs you will be able to uh, attach a like, meaningful name to a pin and then find a pin at some point in the future when you want to get back to it and manage it. Uh, so that work, that's its work in progress in Go IPFS and also uh, in JS uh, HTTP client. We need a JS HTTP client uh, because it will be used by Web UI. So we expect uh, IPFS pin remote commands to land in Go IPFS 0.8 release candidate one this week or maybe next week. And then we will uh, add those new commands to IPFS HTTP client. And then Rafael who uh, just finished uh, stage one integration of pinning services will be able to wire it up and uh, start working on stage two. Um, my understanding is that the stage one of uh, the pinning uh, integration is uh, not adding support for remote pins, but uh, reframing the uh, support for local pins. So it uh, will uh, look natural for us to add remote pins. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's that. Um, yeah, and then there is uh, exciting probably for some folks. <laughs> it's pretty low level, but I mentioned it because it's GUI slash web. And so we use local host uh, subdomain gateways for loading websites from local uh, IPFS node. And if in case anyone is interested in low level details around host names for local host HTTP gateway. I posted uh, some updates across different uh, vendors. We got intent to implement uh, secure context uh, on local host uh, in Chromium and it's effectively done because they mark it as secure context for subdomains. The problem was Firefox where uh, local host itself was secure context but uh, subdomains were not. Uh, so here I was linking to a bunch of ongoing work. However, um, you can see that a bunch of uh, patches landed uh, in the past weeks in Firefox, uh, effectively aligning it with what uh, Google Chrome does. And we now will have a secure context on localhost subdomains without doing anything fancy. We no longer need HTTP proxy and we get a secure context. And what's really exciting about this work is it's not just about Chromium and Firefox. We are working to with Igalia towards creating uh, web platform tests that will ensure uh, that that behavior on localhost is the same across all the browsers. So 
we we reached we are reaching out to WebKit team uh, as well to align uh, the behavior with uh, what Chromium and Firefox do, and we hope the web platform tests will be a good way of uh, kind of like softly enforcing the behavior across uh, different vendors. So it's been a long time uh, in the works, and I'm super excited that it finally landed. Um, I believe that's all on my end. Uh, the remaining part are mid Q4 OKR. Check, like, it's like, uh, me, excuse me, mid Q4 OKR check in. But uh, in case you got anything else to add, I'm open to doing that before boring OKR check in, which is not boring. It's exciting, of course. Uh, that's all I got. Same. Yeah, uh, just a teaser, we will be landing pinning services soon. We will have uh, improved peer screen in web UI at some point, if some people will do that. Um, so stay tuned. Um, OKR check-in. I can share my screen. Yes, please. If people don't like spreadsheets, that's the moment when you need, you can like switch the tab, pretend you don't see the screen. Um, yeah. yeah, so I, I'd say just very quickly going over those. Our P0 focus was and is still pinning services. Um, I'd say things like uh, GUI apps ship with flows for interacting with pinning services. We are actually over like 50%, I'd say like we are around 60 or 70% because like stage one is effectively delivering entire user interface that we need to. And then the only remaining part is to wire it up. So how do we feel about like 60% to be very? Yeah, I'd say 60. I've got some documentation debt on that that um, didn't make any sense to hit until we shipped what's about to land. Yeah. Like the joyride help text and, and how that gets reflected in the docs. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure we got to collapse to implement the API. However, I know there is ongoing uh, integration and testing work between GoIPFS and uh, our initial partners. So I would put that like 80% because the remaining part is... Uh, integration tests when uh, go IPFS 0.8 uh, RC1 and following ones uh, ship. Uh, no risk here. Uh, Web UI reports um, progress while importing four gigabyte file. So um, Iraqli fixed imports of big files. Uh, however, the re error reporting is a separate thing. Uh, I I check in with him yesterday. He's not on the call, but uh, I believe it's like let's make it eighty percent because it's actually done. But the pull request in in review uh, and it's a complicated one across different repos. So I'd say it's safe to say that twenty percent more <laughs> to land it <laughs> because it's never that easy. Um, we don't have any tests. <laughs> no, I mean, like, we don't have conformance tests, which people would be able to run against the repo. We got tests in Sharnes test in Go IPFS repo. Uh, so that could be like 0.2. Uh, um, maybe, maybe we will hit it. Uh, Hopefully, that depends uh, if, if we have uh, bandwidth for that. Um, we mostly focus on ensuring that our initial partners work uh, fine. And I think we will then take those learnings and create a, like generic conformance tests, uh, which can uh, be run by uh, like third parties or additional uh, pinning services. Um, but that did not that did not end up being a priority right now. And the last one is pinning service API spec frozen and tagged as uh, 1.0. I'd say we are close to that. 
I expect uh, to tag uh, uh, 1.0 when Go IPFS 0.8 ships with pinning service integration. Uh, that will be kind of like a flagpole uh, saying, okay, this is uh, how the spec work works. We integrated with uh, third party partners and we got GUI support. We got support in our JS HCP client. So that will be a moment when we tag and freeze. The only change was the one which I described uh, around uh, search and it's still backwards compatible. We had no breaking changes. We don't expect any breaking changes. So that's why like, it's like 80%. Um, improve technical ergonomics for efficient web development. I wish Iraqli was around, uh, You're but just I gonna know. You're going to skip mine. Yours are done. You are like. <laughs> yeah, but I want to explain them <laughs> to anybody who might be on this call. <laughs> to be to be completely honest, um, you, we'd included the item that's highlighted right now as let's do as much as we can when we are not working on pinning services and um, pinning services work as might be expected, got unexpectedly large. Um, but then that said, we have been pushing through as many sort of small scale improvements as we can um, in the backlog. You know, the things that we went over earlier in the call are a good example, um, small, but very useful changes. Um, and even within the, the pinning service UI setup work, uh, we have managed to actually just make some improvements to web UI and desktop overall. So we'll say that that is halfway at the halfway mark with completion at the full mark. Um, second item on that list is uh, doing some research and making some recommendations, some testing based recommendations on information architecture improvements to the IPFS.io website. Uh, this isn't really a visual design effort, so um, I hesitate to say that we're redesigning the website, but we are trying to make some very um, information-packed updates and improvements to that site. Um, there is a link in that master document with an outline, um, as well as a wireframe for anybody who's curious about digging deeper. It's probably not worth going into right now, um, but then also putting together uh, sort of a series of, of PRD documents for the key recommendations that we want to make. Cool. Thanks. Um, I think we are good on those. Um, yeah, so improving technical ergonomics of efficient for efficient web development, it's a pretty vague term for a bunch of work that Iraq has been doing. Um, and also we've been improving um, developer nodes across our different repos. We've been simplifying, uh, like improving uh, CI setups. Uh, I think the biggest thing here is adding, uh, is Iraqli's work on adding TypeScript and then adding uh, CI setup for guarding contributed uh, pull requests. Uh, to automatically check if uh, TypeScript the definitions are still valid for the project. Um, I'm not really sure. I think it's, yeah, I think it landed in JS IPFS. So it's all, it's probably around 80% uh, cause I think uh, TypeScript uh, to JS IPFS was a long, long, uh, ongoing uh, battle uh, for Iraqli and he finally shipped it. Uh, it's also like not 100%. Uh, maybe we will adjust it later, but I feel pretty optimistic about it being 80%. Um, not everything is covered by TypeScript, but those uh, consumer facing um, APIs are. So I think uh, it's we can like assume it may improve. It will probably not uh, be the end this quarter. Um, the next one is dependence and on external CI is removed publishing, uh, packaging and signing is automated. So we moved away from third party CIs and uh, use GitHub actions for desktop. I don't, and I believe companion. We are still using Circle CI for um, web UI. Uh, so I'd say uh, 60 
percent given that gosh let's let's call it 60. <laughs> oh, <it's> 60. <laughs> um, I think it's fair to be if it's fair to be optimistic and say uh, we will be done with this by the end of the quarter because uh, moving away from from uh, github actions for web ui will be easier than it was for desktop we don't have any secrets we don't have any like magical uh, build pipelines it's just a matter of uh, replacing the build um, another thing is we had some help from oli to redo this website um, to not fetch entire thing he's also like moving it to github actions i believe um, so uh, it's ongoing, but we are mostly done with our GUI applications. I don't think we did much progress with metrics. Yeah. I, start, I started tracking uh, total, oh gosh, I started tracking total downloads for um, IPFS desktop on GitHub. And I figured out that number may be useful in a re relative terms. So the number right now is like 700K, but what I'm looking at is comparing um, the difference between uh, like each week, how many new uh, downloads uh, were occurring each week. The problem here is that those downloads are partially downloads of our installation packages, but not all of them because a bunch of them happens through third-party package managers at the same time github is counting all those auto update checks made a few times a week or like 12 hour each 12 hours depending how someone if someone is shutting down their machine or not um, so that's the kind of like very fuzzy number but at the same time it's useful for watching trends so if we see that uh, the difference between week to week right now, I believe it's uh, around 10K increase each week. So that's like both downloads and uh, checks. Uh, but if we see that number like growing or shrinking, we see a trend uh, around IPFS desktop. Is it, was it like mentioned somewhere? Did we got more users that way? Um, but we did not do much here and I didn't and expect we will do. It wasn't it wasn't something that we built this quarter. I think I set up this reporting last quarter, but we do have weekly monitoring of the metrics that we're collecting in Countly. And so um, I've also been keeping an eye on you know, fatal and non-fatal crash events on that weekly report just to see if we're uh, anything we need to be extremely aware of. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. Like re revisiting Countly is also probably part of this and we did not have time this quarter to, to look at it i'd say we probably won't uh given the all the other stuff happening uh, and to be honest i think there's a certain amount of um i'm i'm inclined to wait and see do, do a deeper metrics analysis of what we might need once pinning services lands um to be able to really do reporting on that justice So should I leave like this out or? I think we actually just, I think we actually just drop that and with a note that we have been doing some continuing monitoring. Okay. Because the need uh, really, it hasn't been as much of a need as we thought it was going to be anyway for yeah, this yeah. quarter. Yeah. Uh, do you have access to the spreadsheet? Can you like add the note on grading? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the de a design exists for IPFS base hosting and auto updates for IPFS desktop. It did, did not, nothing happened around this, but it was like P3. Uh, however, we probably, I had some discussions around that with uh, Adin, Oli, and others, and uh, we realized it would not be something specific to IPFS desktop. We most likely would have to figure it out uh, auto update mechanism, which is based on IPFS, maybe IPNS and apply it to Go IPFS uh, and other libraries and tools that we have. And IPFS desktop would be just a consumer of that, uh, like a general purpose um, library or a setup that we uh, figured
figured out at one point. Uh, around IPNS, the problem is secret management. Uh, right now, the original publisher needs to republish um, a record, IPNS record every like 12 hours or something. Um, if it stops, people won't be able to get updates. So uh, it's probably something for 2021. Um, ongoing collapse and grants are supported. Uh, a bunch of work happened in Brave. We've been working uh, with them around embedding Go IPFS, around uh, tweaking the default parameters of Go IPFS, uh, the UI for onboarding user. What, when you first time visit IPFS console slash or a public gateway, you are prompted, hey, do you want to open this uh, we, via a public gateway or do you want to um, start your local node and load it from it? Uh, so a bunch of discussions we, I believe we've passed security review this week uh, and uh, still uh, I won't give a date for shipping this, but we are on, on track for that. So it, I'd say it's like 80% uh, done. Um, what remains to be done is uh, testing. Uh, it's behind the flag in the Brave Nightly and then um, all the release dance uh, comes and stuff that needs to happen either by in December or in January. That's all I can say. Um, Igalia uh, is helping us to uh, improve uh, protocol handlers and local security. So I feel really good about our progress on local host uh, front. Uh, we did not uh, do anything on the WebKit part, but the merge of web UI uh, oh gosh, uh, merge of uh, those localhost patches in uh, Firefox. It was a huge win. So I'm pretty happy about this. Maybe like the problem is it's a big win, but it's just a single browser. Um, so I think it's safe to say like, not sure how to score this because it's like a long going collaboration. Uh, at the same time, it was P3, so it was mostly us uh, supporting Igalia. Um, does not really matter what we've put here. Um, would I would keep it like this for now. Uh, on the Kiwi side, unfortunately, nothing happened uh, when it comes to storing ZIM files on IPFS, but we've made some pro small progress on uh, making Kiwix archives to be more useful when loaded from HTTP website. Um, so that's not something that we were doing uh, as an IPFS project, but we've been having some discussions with Kiwix project and uh, helping them to uh, make the format in which they store uh, Wikipedia snapshots uh, more seekable via range requests or byte requests in IPFS. Uh, and that's kind of like preparation for putting entire um, snapshots on IPFS. Um, that's my quick rambly way of going through them. How do we feel about those OKRs? As expected. As expected. Yes. No, I mean, there was nothing that felt really alarming or out of whack in these. This is sort of what we anticipated at the beginning of the quarter, which means we're starting to get a good feel for the cadence of our planning and what we what we are capable of. Yep. I think the problem with our QRs was that we were super focused on pinning services and we've, pull, like, we've put a lot of uh, priority there. And that's, and given the fact that ne nearly all P0s for us, even like Brave was kind of like, it's expected to, to ship this year. Maybe I will adjust it to 0.9 because it could be January. <laughs> just, to be, just, to be, just to be totally honest. But um, uh, the problem was that now that we are sh 
pretty confident that we'll be able to ship Phoenix services this quarter. Uh, that impacted our projection to be <laughs> kind of too high. Um, but that's mostly a product of the fact that P zeros get the most weight when you calculate the total score. Um, but I feel it's pretty good. Uh, I'll check in with Irakli around uh, items which I kind of filled in his on his behalf. Um, so we may adjust some numbers uh, later this week. But I feel that's more or less how where we are now. Uh, of course, like pinning services is priority for this group, and we'll do our best to ship it with the core implementations working group uh, with go ipfs 0.8 there will be new web ui there will be new uh http clients uh, eventually in js ipfs there will also be a remote pinning service uh, support so the, the pin remote and uh, namespace will be part of core api and we'll have pin local uh, as well which it will give people ability to assign uh, names to pins, but I'm not sure if that ha will happen this quarter. I'm pretty sure the remote pinning will happen this quarter. Um, that's it on my end. Any last minute exciting breaking news? No. Nothing exciting. All right. Uh, thanks so much uh, for joining after a long long time when we did not have this call uh thanks for to anyone who's actually watching this sorry for not being around and being a bit, a bit trusty when it comes to this call uh we'll try to do this bi-weekly um especially like this following this quarter when we'll start landing pinning services expect uh, some uh visual demos uh, on that next time but that's it for now Bye.